In this video, we're gonna talk about the most common backstroke mistakes I see every day. Now these mistakes span all ages and abilities, so there's a good chance you're making at least one of them. But don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'm gonna give you all the tools and drills you need to solve these problems. Stick around, you're gonna to wanna to see this. If you're new to the channel, I'm Coach Matt Z. I'm the head coach at Davis Aquatic Masters, and I also make YouTube videos for people looking to learn more and elevate their swimming. Today, we're gonna talk all things backstroke, and I'm gonna give you the tools and drills you need to fix some of the most common mistakes I see every day. But before we get into that, I just have a huge favor to ask you guys. If you guys could hit that thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, your support means a lot to me. Now let's get into it. Let's get started with mistake number one, and not surprising, it is bad head position, the most common mistake I see across the board. It also affects backstroke. When people swim backstroke, they tend to like to swim with their head up, and when we swim backstroke, we want that head back. You want your nose to be the highest point on your face. The problem is, is when you swim backstroke like that, the water tends to flow over your face, and it's not comfortable. And it's especially not comfortable when you're swimming backstroke fast and you're tired and you're searching for air. So you've got to work through this and get comfortable with that water flowing over your face because when your head is up, your hips are going to sink. So how can we fix this? Well, we're going to do some body position kicking and the kicking that I like to do with backstroke is body line kick. So with body line kick, we'll have one arm up, one arm at your side. Your eyes are looking up now, really focus on your nose being the highest point on your face, not your forehead, not your chin. And we're gonna try to line up our body so your nose is lined up with your shoulder and your hip. And we're just gonna hold that body position as we kick through the water. Now I like to do this drill with fins. You don't have to use fins, it's up to you, but it does make it a little bit easier. You're gonna go a little faster, which makes it a little bit more fun. Whether you're using fins or not, Make sure you're focusing on great head position. Also, don't forget about body position. Squeeze your core, squeeze your glutes so you're in a nice straight line as you're kicking down the pool. If you can get your head in the right position, your hips are gonna raise up to the surface and you're gonna be swimming a much faster and more efficient backstroke. All right, moving into the second most common mistake I see in backstroke every day, and this one seems to especially affect beginners. It's pulling at your hips. I see a lot of novice swimmers who have a hard time with the rhythm and the connection of backstroke, and they tend to spend a lot of time with their arms at their hips. And this is gonna cause balance and efficiency problems. And that's basically the long way of saying, when you swim backstroke like this, your hips are gonna sink and it's gonna be a lot harder. Just like when we're swimming freestyle, we wanna swim with our arms out in front in that front quadrant. Now it's a little weird because we're swimming backstroke and we're on our back, but the idea is the same. When your arms spend time out in front of you, they're gonna help balance out your body and make you a more efficient swimmer. So we really wanna solve this problem so your arms aren't working against you. And the way we're gonna do this is with a drill I call L drill, which is sort of like the backstroke equivalent to catch up freestyle. For L drill, we're gonna start off in that body line position like we did before. The cool thing about body line and L drill is it's a nice little progression to work on both head position and proper pulling. So we're starting in that body line, we're gonna lift one arm up, keeping the other one out in front, up by your ear, and we're gonna hold it there for about two seconds and then simply switch and repeat on the other side. If you struggle with this problem, this drill is gonna to be tough for you. Keep working on it, don't give up. This is actually one of my favorite drills because I think it works so well at correcting this issue in backstroke. And if you can figure out how to swim with your arms out in front more, it's gonna balance out your stroke and make your backstroke more efficient, easier, and faster. Moving into mistake number three, this one I see across the board, it is a narrow entry or entering your hands too far behind your head. When you enter too far behind your head, you tend to have your arm in an awkward position, which makes it hard to get a good catch. You end up missing out on the beginning of your pull and it's also really hard on your shoulders. Ideally, we wanna have a nice straight arm entry just outside the shoulder line. This is gonna allow you to swim tall and balanced while also getting an efficient pull. All right, so how are we gonna fix this problem? Well, I've got two drills for you. The first one's pretty common and simple, so we'll start there. We're gonna do some double arm backstroke. And when you do this double arm backstroke, it's gonna be really hard to enter too narrow. So to give you a good idea of how the entry should feel, try doing a little double arm backstroke, then going into regular backstroke, mimicking the entry from the drill. 
The next drill I have for you is a little trickier and requires kind of an odd piece of equipment. What we're gonna do here is a backstroke stick swim. Using a five to seven foot piece of PVC pipe, you're gonna hold onto it so one arm is extended and the other one is at about a 90 degree angle. Then you're just gonna swim regular backstroke. This drill is great for working on the connection and the pull and backstroke, and will also make it nearly impossible to enter too narrow. Give it a try. It will take some getting used to, and you might want to wear fins. I know it's a little wacky, but if you can figure this one out, it's really going to improve your backstroke. And solving this super common narrow entry problem is going to help you reduce your chance of shoulder injuries, increase your efficiency, and, you guessed it, make you faster. There you have it, guys. The three most common mistakes I see in backstroke every day and how to fix them. Get out there, give these drills a try, and let me know in the comments how they worked out for you. I'm Coach Matt Z. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up button. If you like this content, click the subscribe button. I've got new content coming out each week, and your support really helps out the channel. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'll see you next time.